Yo, what's going on guys? It's CBrev. Welcome to What Would Brev Do? Episode 29. This is the series where I, a top player, talk through an entire ranked season's game from start to finish and let you know what's going on in my head the entire time. If you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe. I post a ton of MLB The Show content that I'm sure you'll love. Drop a like on the video. That helps me out a ton. Finally getting around to doing one of these episodes pitching with you, Darvish. This has been highly requested since he came out. Uh, been a bit of an uphill battle for me trying to learn how to pitch with this card. Uh, hopefully this episode will help you guys out, but I do kind of feel he's on the lower tier of uh, the finest pitchers that came out with Stage 4 Team Affinity. Um, I think this card has a couple of really big weaknesses. The first one, which I think is the biggest one, is his hits per nine. Um, you don't think of his hits per nine being low because it's the number 99, but he's actually very low hits per nine compared to what you could have at the end game right now. Uh, just for comparison, I stumbled upon this the other day, uh, but Yu Darvish actually has lower hits per nine than this 96 Felix card, which was a third inning program boss, so like a May-June card. Uh, even lower hits per nine than this, so I think it's pretty significantly low. Um, 99 is 25 lower than both Lament and Bauer on the mound, and if you guys didn't know, hits per nine determines the size of your opponent's inner PCI, or basically how easy it is for them to make good contact. So 99 hits per nine, really low. I think it hurts this card a lot. Uh, second biggest weakness of this guy, and this will be my first tip with pitching with him, is his pitch repertoire is strikingly similar to two of the best relief pitchers in the game, those being Mariano Rivera and Kinley Jansen, who I have taken out, and that'll be my biggest tip for this one. Um, if you notice, they have the exact same pitch repertoire, except Darvish has a curveball instead of a changeup. Otherwise, Rivera and Jansen are the same pitcher as Darvish, and Darvish even has lower velocity than the other two. Um, so, in general, I think having a better support system around Darvish with the bullpen I think is really important. I've even tried uh, doing an opener with Darvish here and there, and uh, you just can't expect him to go too deep into games because the cutter sequence cutter sinker sequencing can get very repetitive at times and you for sure 100% do not want to throw either Mariano or Kinley Jansen in the game that you Darvish is pitching or you're exposing yourself to six seven eight innings of the same sequencing to your opponent which is obviously not good um, if you're really in love with Mariano if you're really in love with Kinley you can maybe throw one of them but definitely absolutely do not throw both of them in the same game I have replaced Kinley Jansen in this one with Neshek and Mariano doesn't have full energy so I'm just leaving him into recover but he is unavailable as well I think it's really really important guys so uh, my righties for this game out of the bullpen are Neshek, Dibble, and Gossage who are all very different pitchers than Udarvish is and very different pitchers than Mariano and Kinley uh, so you can kind of mix it up when Dar once Darvish is out of the game and uh, yeah I think that's a pretty important tip also don't expect Darvish to go too deep into games I'm fully prepared to pinch hit with for Darvish uh, second time through the lineup or third time through the lineup depending on how high scoring the game is uh, just because I understand that he's pretty easy to pick up over time. So kind of a shorter leash with Darvish as well. Also, another tip, if you notice when I searched for a game, it was a night game. That is because Darvish has an active quirk of night player. So your opponent's PCIs are going to be a little bit slower, smaller if you do land on that home game and it's at a nighttime game. Also, if you get lucky on your, and you're on the road but your opponent's playing a night game, he will also get that boost. So... I'll do my best to try to talk about his sequencing and how I kind of pitch with Darvish, but again, uh, not as effective as some of the other options you have from the finest release. Uh, one of Darvish's biggest strengths, I've talked about his weaknesses, but his biggest strength is his control, um, specifically on his cutter. So one of the biggest tips I can give for pitching with this card is um, I typically like to throw the cutter when I'm really far behind in the count or really far ahead in the count. Um, and I typically like to throw it arm side as well and try to catch people looking, try to throw it outside to lefties, inside to righties. Um, you really cannot throw the cutter a whole lot with this card, but when I really need to, when I need the control, um, AKA painting people way ahead in the count, catching them looking or getting back in the count with an easy strike, uh, that's when I'll throw the cutter with this card. The fact that he pitches out of the stretch and has such good control on his cutter is really good for Darvish. Um, as far as his pitches go, uh, I would say the two pitches that I throw the most with this guy are slider and sinker. Um, I definitely throw the cutter the least, I would say. He, maybe that's up there with the curveball. Um, but right on right, I'm throwing tons of sliders, and right on left, I'm throwing tons of sinkers. You can weave in the four seam a lot if you're trying to uh, mess up with your opponent's PCI. And actually, 3-2 is a good spot for the cutter here, so we'll try to front door this. Use that control to our advantage perfectly done there so 
You can see I throw the cutter sparingly, but I throw it in exactly the spots that I was talking about when I'm trying to catch someone looking or get back in the count. Um, but yeah, lots of sliders to righties. I actually think Darvish's control on his off speed, his 12-6 curve and his slider is really good. The issue is they have so much break that they're kind of difficult to throw for competitive strikes. We got basically a perfect release there, so that ended up in a good spot. But um, those off-speed pitches are really hard to throw a lot. I do actually think that uh, his 12-6 curve is maybe the best 12-6 curve in the game, though. It's a really, it's really got a ton of break, and it's really awkward to try and hit with your PCI because of the break. And I think his velocity is in a type of velocity like range that not a lot of 12-6 curves are. It's kind of like an awkward velocity. Nice little perfect, perfect double from our opponent there. So we're back to right on right. We're back to working the slider. You can throw the slider high. I wouldn't throw the slider high as much as someone like Kershaw just because it's a slower slider. It's naturally going to be more effective down in the zone. Uh, but again, slider sinker, mostly. I missed my big spot really bad there, and that's a middle-middle sinker, so that happens. <laughs> um... Darvish's control is his biggest strength, uh, but at the end of the day, I'm the one pulling the trigger on the pitches, so I gotta make a better pitch than that, especially in a 1-1 count. So that's pretty tough starting the game off. Uh, a couple of good swings by him. Honestly, that perfect, perfect double on the uh, ball outside was a great swing. That one's a little bit tough. And we're actually gonna do an early mound visit here, try to get some confidence back. That was a really tough swing result and it may be a result of our lack of confidence on the mound for our pitcher not having the RNG going in our favor but you can see right on right I'm starting him with sliders right on left I'm starting him with sinkers I don't really adjust this until my opponents do um, and there was a spot where the high slider was super effective and now that I'm ahead 0-2 I think I can try to work this curveball again he was early and under it so that's what I mean I can just tell from that uh, swing result that he was under the ball and I really really think Darvish's 12-6 curve is one of his best pitches you just have to put yourself in a position to throw it and get them to swing at it um, Darvish really isn't much of a strikeout pitcher a lot of your outs are going to come from contact and that's one of the reasons I think his curveball is so good so basically talked non-stop start to finish in that half inning but I hope I said everything that I wanted to say and did it uh, in a way that you guys can understand um, at the end of the day, we're down 2-0, but really it was the, the one sinker middle-middle that if anybody throws that pitch, it's going to get cranked. So uh, just didn't hit our spot. It happens. Facing Arietta, um, I don't know how much facing Arietta tips are going to help you guys because I don't see this card a whole lot. But uh, I'll, basically every pitch that Arietta throws is on the hard spectrum, the high velo spectrum. So just make sure you're keeping a quick bat. Even if you guess sinker and it's a changeup, sometimes you can get an early swing for a hit. Um, even there, the slider away, I was early and I backed off of it. Uh, but his slider is super hard. Even that was 89 and it was low and away. So just keeping a fast bat really good versus Arietta. He went back to the sinker there. We pieced it up for a nice little single. And he's trying to bait us into going to second base, which we obviously are not going to fall for. Um, but yeah, I think Arietta's biggest weakness, honestly, is the lack of speed differential in his pitches. So I've found success just keeping a fast bat, just kind of assuming every pitch is a sinker until it isn't. And uh, sometimes you even get lucky with early swings, which is the name of the game on this on MLB The Show 20, honestly. He's doing a good job holding the ball here, making sure I'm not stealing, because Arietta is decently slow to the plate. Um, we need to make sure here we're not swinging at balls at the knees, um, trying to avoid the double play. Going to be a little bit harder to do that with two strikes on us now, but staying out of double plays is always good. I imagine this would be a slider of some sort. It was not. He went back to the sinker. Good sequence by him. Honestly, a strikeout's better than a double play there. Obviously, we don't like to make outs, but could have had a worse outcome there. And I didn't listen to myself on that swing, honestly. I caught myself guessing slider and got blown away by the sinker. Whereas if I'd have just kept a fast bat, we'd have been chilling on that swing most likely. So that is my bad. Griffey here. It's nice having runners on with Griffey at the plate because there's no shift. Since Griffey's such a pull hitter on this game. And we're just trying to stay patient, pick up on sequences as always. He is holding the ball forever. Uh, with the run on first, which is maybe a little extreme. <laughs> kind of a little frustrating, honestly, but uh, you got to applaud the guy for trying his best because that's what we're doing. 2-1 here. Uh, again, we want pitches belt high or above. 
We do not want to swing at a pitch at the knees with a 2-1 count. That ball was up. Uh, maybe we'll edit that out. That was kind of rough. I was not trying to say that. But, uh, yeah, pitch up, sinker, and we smoked it to center field. Could have just said smoked. Would have been fine. All right, Jimmy Fox up now. Gets the circle change inside, and that's what I'm talking about with the fast bat. Um, I kind of swung like that was a sinker. It broke like it was a sinker, and the ball could just kind of drifted into the good part of my timing window. Um, and that's one of the Arietta's biggest weaknesses, I think. It's really the speed differential at the end of the day. And, uh, again, the per nines. Only 93K per nine for Arietta means your opponents are going to be in a lot of two-strike counts. Fouling a lot of pitches off. And, uh, yeah, my experience with Arietta has not been great so far. So we take the lead right back. 1-2 here. Again, trying to keep a fast bat. He did go back to the sinker. That was a pretty obvious sinker spot there, honestly, because that is what he struck us out on last time. We did pull it foul, so a natural reaction to be, would be go to a slider here. But, uh, again, trying to keep a fast bat because we never really know. It was a slider. Again, the K per 9 working in our favor. Our approach working in our favor. And uh, see if he doubles up on that. He did. My PCI was for a sinker there. And we were too early. So those kind of strikeouts are actually okay. Um, again, keeping a fast bat is our approach. So those are going to happen. If I was more keen to the slider there, we could have crushed that pitch because it was not in a good spot. But uh, that's not really the approach we're rolling with so far. So we've actually struck out twice on Hall of Fame versus Arietta, which is slightly embarrassing. But uh, still a good inning for us. All three of our hits were clean hits with good timing. So... Got to be proud of that. Also, for those of you wondering, I am running Garrig over Bellinger at first base on my God Squad. Uh, I do think Bellinger is the better card at first, but uh, I'm working. I might as well work towards Garrig's prestige on this account since I kind of already started it. So that's why Garrig is in. That's really the only reason. I would definitely prefer Bellinger over Garrig in a tournament setting for sure. Ooh, he went with the curveball there. So he strikes out the sign on us. We are a little bit rusty. That's okay, though. Jimmy Fox came in clutch, as he always does. Love me some Jimmy Fox. Trying to decide if I want to mix up the uh, the sequencing here yet. I don't think that I do. So 0-2 again. We're going to go back to this curveball. Try to throw it in a spot where it's really awkward, where he kind of has to swing at it. And uh, he did actually take a pretty good swing of that. So let's try another one, maybe outside. Did not end up outside. Not a good pitch there. Um, and now's a good spot to try to catch him with the backdoor cutter here. Again, way ahead in the count, way behind in the count. That is where you want to throw the cutter. That is actually an insane swing by him to recognize that as breaking in the zone and almost hitting it out. He was early side of good on that. So that was actually a ridiculous swing. <laughs> that swing makes me not want to throw cutters ever to this guy. Jeez. Okay. Back to the sliders against righties. He is early. Machado does not make the play. That's another tough swing result for us. Um, and now that the pitcher's up with Arietta, I'm going to do my best to try to get a double play here. People typically don't bunt with Arietta because he can hit. Let's see if we can go a second. Nice. Easy double play. Um, I've done this myself as well, hitting with Arietta. Because he has the, the ability to hit a home run, people don't really play him like a normal pitcher. And so you can really bait people into swinging into double plays just like we did there. He was late side of good on a sinker and gave us two outs instead of just bunting or striking out or doing whatever he should have been doing with his pitcher spot there. So just like that, we're out of the inning. What was that? A less than 10 pitch inning for sure. Pretty good inning by Darvish there. Uh, again, being patient early in the count, especially Machado right on right. Against someone like Arietta. we basically want to sell out uh, swinging early, and so really I'm looking for inside tunnels here. Especially 3-1. I might just take this, but if it's an inside tunnel, I might turn and burn. Yep. That is beautiful hitting, chat. <laughs> so I kind of speed talked through what was going on there, but this is something I actually do all the time that I don't think a lot of other creators or just people in general talk about is breaking down the strike zone into specific areas given the situation. So that was a 3-1 count there. Um, our approach against Arietta is going to be to keep a fast bat. We're way ahead in the count. We're leading off the inning. So I've narrowed down the strike zone to the inside part. Uh, and what I, what I mean by tunnel is like where does the pitch look like it's going out of the hand. And so I told myself I'm only going to swing if it's the inside tunnel. So that it tunnels towards the inside part of the plate. 
because that situation almost guarantees a sinker. Um, and so we're just going to turn and burn on that. We're going to have the fastest bat we can have if it appears as if it's going inside, and we're just going to turn and burn, like I said. Nice little walk by Mookie there. And now we may try to steal versus Arietta. He might be a little tilted, a little careless here. Uh, we can't do it 0-1, though, because people typically slide step second pitch uh, when they think you're steel bunting. We'll even take a lead yet. So he kind of did what he had to do there to prevent our steal, so now we're just going to strike out. We do not want to hit into a double play with our pitcher like he did, so we just take the one out and move on to the top of our order. Again, eliminating parts of the strike zone with tunnels. If it tunnels low, I'm staying far away from it. Uh, we do not want to kill our rally here by swinging at a ball below the zone and hitting into a double play. So belt higher, higher is really what I'm looking for in this situation. That low and away fastball, I want nothing to do with it. Because if it's a sinker, it ends up below the zone, and we chop it. Same with that pitch. Again, we're looking we're looking belt, we're looking high. This is our approach right here. And uh, keeping a fast bat as always. There's another inside belt high sinker. We just turned on it a little early. That's okay. That's much better than being late. I'm trying to double up there. And uh, I'm not going to send the runner with Willie Mays on deck. If we hit into a double play, that sucks, but... Luckily, we did not. <laughs> that was actually kind of a lucky swing. You can see my PCI was built for the sinker there. We would have perfect liner to sinker. Uh, but that being at the top of the zone, they still rewarded me with a bomb. We will take that. That doesn't happen very often. I have 100% popped out on that exact swing before. So we will thank the MLB, the show gods, and uh, move on. But yeah, once again, this is the issue with Arietta, man. You just, everything's hard. Even there, I was very early on a sinker, or on a slider, sorry, and still fouled it. Can just sit sinker, basically, against this guy. There I sat slider. <laughs> and Willie Mays takes it the other way. Mays one of the best cards in the game at taking outside pitches for bombs. Because of his slow swing, much like Jackson, much like Machado. All of a sudden, we're up 7-2. to two. Hopefully this guy sticks around for a little bit. Uh, so we can get some reps with Darvish. I imagine he will. Um, he actually hit has hit really well so far. So his confidence should be high enough to think we're, that he's still in this game. That was a lucky swing. But again, keeping a fast bat, doing what we need to do against Jake. Um, 0-1 swinging with the shift on is actually something I would not advise. So that was maybe a mistake by me, but uh, we got rewarded with a single. Sometimes it's like that. Keeping the fast bat again. PCI is a little bit off. Maybe try to tag to second there if he got a bad animation, but he did not. So that's another good at bat from us, honestly. You can see we're attacking early in the count this inning a lot more as well. It's kind of just, we kind of just know what he has to throw to, to stay competitive. There, we're just early on a slider. Again, the lack of speed differential, that pitch is basically middle, middle. And so for all you guys that say I take too many pitches, this is a classic inning of me just uh, understanding that now I've figured out everything I need to figure out. <laughs> like, the reason I take so many pitches is to figure out information, and uh, the information done been figured out this game. So that is why we have been kind of hyper-aggressive this inning. Also, Arietta's confidence is way low, uh, considering we put up a 9 spot on him through not even 2 innings. And so the lower the confidence, the more likely you'll be rewarded for uh, good swings. And he is gone. So let's roll this back into a game number two. All right, we are on the second account, same squad, but we're going to have a Darvish that is a little bit low on energy. I'm just going to go ahead and throw him just for the sake of getting this video done. You can see on this bullpen we have Kenley and Mariano full energy ready to go. And we are definitely going to replace them for this. We'll go with Raleigh. I don't think this account has Neshek. Yeah, he does not have Neshek here. So we'll go with Raleigh and Gagne instead of uh, Mariano and Kinley. Again, for the same reasons we talked about earlier. I want to jump into a game pretty quickly since you guys already saw, you know, two innings of another game. But uh, I hope you guys learned some stuff in the first one. Uh, sorry, every time I try to record these videos, people end up leaving early in the game. It's kind of frustrating me. That's why I haven't been posting a lot of them lately, but I hope this one has been helpful regardless. Um, hopefully, the way I was pitching the first game can be replicated in this game, and you guys can learn some stuff. But again, pitching with Darvish really isn't as much about pitching with Darvish as it is just setting yourself up 
uh, for later in the game with the right bullpen, uh, using the right sequencing early to keep yourself in it, and then kind of getting moving into the later innings uh, and doing what you need to do against their bullpen. Um, which is another reason I'm not too upset throwing Darvish not at full energy here because he typically doesn't throw too deep into the games for me anyway. There is a chance this game ends up on All-Star, though, because this account has not played a game this season yet. He is at 700 rating, so we will see what happens. But we got four fresh righties out of the bullpen and two fresh lefties, so if we need to go to the pen early, which is something I advise if your opponent is crushing Darvish, uh, then we can do that. I'm pretty lucky to have... Basically a god squad on two accounts, though. It allows me to do stuff like this for my content. Just hop over to the next one, get another game done, give you guys as much info as I possibly can. So here we go. We were the home team again with the Night Player Quirk, uh, which is going to boost our PCI for you in this game. He's late on a couple sinkers there. So just based on this information, I'm going to go ahead and throw a four seam up and in O2 just to see what he does with it. And I didn't miss my spot. Uh, you can see from last game, this is a spot where I would throw the curveball or the slider, or maybe even a backdoor cutter. Uh, but I wanted to challenge him there just to see if he could do that, because he was late on a couple pitches there. So unfortunately, we give up a solo shot for information there. Uh, but now we know. Maybe he did that as a guess, because we doubled up, or maybe he's just a good hitter. We shall find out. Um, but yeah, good hit by him there. Again, sinker slider, the pitches I throw the most by far with you. Sliders versus righties, sinkers versus lefties. He is so early on that is painful. I am very happy that did not leave the yard. <laughs> I bet that timing was in orange on the thing. That's how early he was. Jeez, that was almost very early. It almost left the yard. I would have been kind of frustrated immediately there. Let's try a cutter here just to, I don't know, see if we can get a strike. And he cranks it. This is, again, <laughs> why I don't throw a whole lot of cutters with you. People people just know. They know you're, it's your best pitch. You, uh, it's, it just sucks, man. I know there's, like, I've battled it with it in my head. Like, if I wanted to throw sink or slider, I could do that with someone other than you, Darvish, which is maybe why I don't pitch you as often. Uh, yeah, it just sucks, man. You want to you cutter spam. It's just like Mariano, man. You, you want to cutter spam because that's your best pitch, but... It just doesn't work out. There's the 0-2 curve, and I think he was guessing on that Mickey home run. Don't want to take anything away from the guy, but um, we will definitely try the slow stuff more as we move through this game when we are ahead in the count. That was a spot I could have easily tried to backdoor a cutter there, as I did in game number one, but I kind of had the feeling his bat was going to be fast there, so I decided it wouldn't be a good pitch. This game is definitely an all-star. My PCI is gigantic, so... This could end up being a very high scoring game. My opponent had very high batting averages with all of his cards as well. Um, get foul. That ended up staying fair in our favor. Okay, I will take that. Man, that changeup is so, so slow on All-Star. That's crazy. I can't believe I swung at that. <laughs> I'm actually embarrassed by that at bat. So he goes first pitch sinker inside. This is pretty common sequencing for Maze. He probably just goes to it again here shortly. Especially 2-0, well. I'm looking for an up and in sinker here. I'll just turn and burn on it like Machado. He went to a slider there. All right, now 3-0, oh, I'm going to just take till two strikes. It's very likely he's just going to hose me sinkers, but uh, walking is so much better than hitting into a double play here that I'd like to sacrifice these next two pitches just in case he walks me. Bat's fast here, 3-2. He did hang the slider, so I'm a little, a little sad my bat was fast, but I have to protect against the sinker like that. Because that is the most common sequence against Maze, who has a slow, slow swing. And we did get him to shy away from it by pulling that foul, and we worked the walk. So good start for us at the plate. Nice low and away sinker there. We want no part of it. Again, going back to last game, double play situation. We are avoiding swinging at pitches low in the zone. Please hit this off the wall. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he actually scaled the wall and robbed that. I am so sad. That's maybe the sickest home run rob I've ever seen in my entire life. What was that? That was an absolute missile by Griffey. I've actually never seen anybody successfully rob a home run with that animation that he got at the wall. That's nuts. <laughs> it's probably going to save him two runs. Didn't even hit the cutoff there, man. Dang. 
I wonder if that guy ever does that again in his entire life. All right, moving on. Can't be salty about it. Good play. Again, I mean, we're just sitting sinker, basically. That's a line out. But we absolutely destroyed the ball that inning. That's one of the tougher innings I've had in a while, but we got to feel good about our approach after that one. Remember, staying, staying objective. Could have easily scored way more than one there, but our approach was good. That's all we can ask for. And now uh, I got to try to figure out how to locate with you here. I'm really struggling, especially with the off speed so far. That's a middle, middle sinker, and he was late on it. That was just pure luck, basically. We did kind of slow his bat down with the two sliders, but uh, he just missed that one. Nothing I can say. For you having as much control as he does, I tend to leave pitches middle-middle probably more than I should. I think it's probably user error mechanically, but, you know, again, if you were to ask me, I probably should have said this earlier in the video, but if you were to ask me, you Darvish is definitely not on my God Squad rotation right now. There are several guys I would much rather pitch with, even just from the finest release. Uh, you know, Lamette, uh, Bauer, you guys know I like. DeGrom, obviously, is one of the best pitchers in the game. I just don't think there's a whole lot of room for Darvish as it stands, but still a really fun card to pitch with. And if you're a Cubs fan, if you're a Rangers fan, if you love you, Darvish, uh, definitely don't shy away from him. He's a good card. He's just not a great card, in my opinion. So he made the nice adjustment there, took that slider away, so... We may have to give this guy a little more of a rocking chair look moving forward. Um, he has shown me that he will adjust with his bat speed. You know, the Mickey home run was an adjustment. That line out by Tatis was an adjustment. So we need to do a better job keeping him off balance a little more. Um, trying to be patient here leading off the inning, especially with the shift on. You guys know I don't like swinging with the shift on. With the leadoff batter. Especially with these lefties that are pull happy. Belly's a little better at going the other way than Griffey is, but uh, that's a hanging curve. <laughs> that is an all-star curveball. I felt like an entire decade passed from when the time that ball left the hand till when I pressed X. Here we are. Saw it the whole way. Love to see it. All right, this is a sinker all day, every day. And we perfect it for a line out. So... Let me talk about how I knew that was a sinker. This is a bunch of stuff from old What Would Brev do that is kind of coming back into fruition there. Uh, number one, people don't typically like doubling up on pitches they just gave up bombs on, uh, specifically like the pitch archetype. So he threw me a really slow curve and I crushed it. So he's probably going to want to counter with something hard there. Also, right on right versus Machado. Machado, a very slow swing, a very common sequence is to throw Machado inside with sinkers. So those two pieces of information put together made me supremely confident he would start me with a first pitch sinker there. We did everything we're supposed to do, and we lined out. It's okay. It happens. Nice little one-two pitch from him there. I could have been more aggressive early in the count. That at bat for sure, but I was kind of talking, and again, it goes back to don't really like swinging early in the count. Nobody on base with the auto shift on. It's just something I don't like to do. Would rather work some pitches and... Uh, See if they leave me one outside that I can go the other way with and try to just turn and burn on one pitch and ground out into the shift. You know what I mean? That dang shift. Actually, good swing there. Saw that cutter the whole way. Going from a Hall of Fame to All-Star is a pretty big jump. I feel like everything is super slow. Good at bat there by you. Nothing we can do with zero contact, three power, but we get another solo shot. And we're back on the mound with our boy, Darvish. I'm going to go first pitch curveball here. He's been swinging first pitch a lot. Maybe I get him to uh, take a bad swing. That was the opposite of a bad swing. But we get bailed out. I wanted that outside as well. I feel like he would have been earlier in the timing window if that was outside rather than inside. But here we go with me missing spots with you, Darvish, again. Now that the pitcher's up, I'm going to throw some cutters, try to get some confidence for that pitch. Specifically, this is also another thing you can do. Um, not just with Darvish, but with anyone. If they throw a really good pitch, but you just feel like you can never throw it because your opponent's always looking for it, um, use the pitcher spot as an opportunity to get that pitch's confidence up so when you do throw it, you're uh, you're looking a little prettier with the RNG. It's a tip I've talked about before, but not a lot of people may know about it. All right, did not throw that sinker middle-middle. That is a plus. And now I'm going to try to go to the soft stuff. Another low one in curveball to a lefty. Missed my spot. 
Actually didn't. That ended up working out pretty nicely. Let's try the low and in back foot slider here. You can see his bat is still super fast. I'm going to try to predict his adjustment here, and I'm going to try to backdoor this cutter, hoping he has a slow bat. And he ended up just taking that. That was actually not the location we wanted to hit. Uh, but maybe he thought it was another slider. That accidentally tunneled exactly like the slider we just threw, so that was pretty lucky. But yeah, I kind of was hoping he wasn't looking for the hard stuff there. And again, that's kind of the beauty of holding the cutter with Darvish as well for when you really need it. Um, I haven't thrown a ton of cutters, so he 100% was not looking for it there. And that may have contributed to him not swinging at that pitch. 3-1 to Trout. I'm taking all the way here. Even though no shift is on, we got the top of our order. A leadoff walk is huge. Great pitch by him, actually. Um, he's gone outside slow stuff after that up and in sinker pretty consistently here. So that was just an amazing spot. I waited as long as I felt like I could, but that pitch was in the perfect location. We were right about what he'd throw, but just could not sit back long enough. Great pitch by him. Wasn't really looking for the cutter there. Don't really want to swing first pitch here anyway. A lot of people see me take pitches like that and uh, wonder why, but I have my reasons. If you guys watch me enough. <laughs> he threw another middle middle sinker there, sinker there that we chopped randomly. That was actually a really good swing. PCI and timing and all. Just uh, gods weren't on our sides on that one. That curveball was too juicy to lay off. Probably shouldn't be swinging at that pitch. But that seemed like the belly one. Yeah, sorry I'm not talking as much when I'm hitting. I mean, you guys have seen Oral probably thousands of times by now, as have I. And that's exactly why I don't like swinging early in the count into the shift. But we get lucky with Hornsby sucking at second base. Um, but yeah, I mean, what is there to say about Oral? Look sinker inside versus righties. Look cutter away versus righties. And then most of his off speed you can recognize right away out of the hand. So, rope that to center field, four in, out. We are actually having a tough time at the plate. I feel like almost all of my outs have been good timing. Even early side of good, more than late. Just uh, just got to keep taking the hacks and hope they turn around for us at some point. I'm tempted to try to uh, start incorporating cutters more against this guy. He's become noticeably, noticeably more patient as the game has gone on and uh, noticeably not liking the cutter, I guess you could say. He turned a burn on that sinker. Good hit by him. Uh, Darvish, a even though he pitches out of the stretch, a little slow to the plate as well, so we need to be a little careful with our timing to home plate make sure he can't just get an easy steal on us. Uh, let's try a sinker below the zone since he swung at that. Maybe we can get him to chop a double play. That was way too low. He hesitated going to second, so we may get him. Dang. That's the Jimmy Fox effect right there. It happens. So now we're behind in the count. We're going to try to sneak a cutter inside, see if we can get him swinging. I don't actually hate walking Bellinger here, so we're just going to throw another cutter in, see if he can give us a strike. Good take by him. So far, very good inning by him at the plate. Nice adjustments. Way to see the ball. And he's first pitch hacking against that four seam. Let's try to go inside with the cutter again. Maybe he, uh, yep. I was hoping he'd kind of hit that for a double play, but he did, just swung through it. And we tunnel the up and in fastball with that cutter, and he takes the bait. Easy peasy there. Now we go to the slow stuff. Don't want to be too predictable here. Where's he at in his order? He may uh, be warming someone up here. Babe Ruth is fifth. It'd be a little bit of a quick trigger on the warm up, but I'm trying to figure out what he was doing in the pause menu there. Maybe he just wanted to take a breather. Down 2 0. Gonna try to throw this cutter. Get ourselves back in the at bat. We haven't had a single 3 0 count this game, so I wonder if he'll swing. He did not. And now is when we're really trying to use our cutter control. Get ourselves back in this at bat with competitive strikes. And now that we are. We go back to the pitches that we know are probably going to work when he swings. So just like that, unfortunately, our only plays to first. But uh, that was a classic case of you Darvish battle and back down 3-0 and why we kind of save the cutter for when we really need it. Uh, 
We'll go curveball first pitch here. He ropes it to second, four and out, and we get out of that inning somehow. Pretty lucky there. Pretty good stuff by Darvish, though. You can see why I'm so high on his curveball. He's really, uh, he has the ability to really place it, like, for strikes low in the zone or, like, close enough to get them to swing. Um, so that's why I love to throw it when I'm really far ahead in the count. That's why I love to throw it when I'm looking to generate a contact out from an opponent who is probably looking to swing. Uh, so really, really good stuff there. One of my biggest mistakes with Darvish, I think, over my first 10 or 15 starts is I was not throwing that curveball enough. It's a really, really strong pitch and a, a unique pitch for Darvish. Not a lot of guys throw a 12-6 curve. Maybe nobody throws a 12-6 curve that, that, that is as good as Darvish is. So really like that pitch, especially in big spots. So I guess as a summary, while he's paused um, with Darvish, again, save the cutters for when you're really far behind in the count, really far ahead in the count. Um, try to throw it arm side for back doors or front doors. Um, sinkers, four seams, and sliders are your best friends. Early in the count, trying to get ahead. And then uh, curveballs versus guys that are probably going to swing at the pitch when you throw it. So, Up and in sinker, ripped again. I really... <laughs> Don't get me wrong, my opponents had some great swings for out too, but I really am not sure what else I'm supposed to be doing this game. I don't know how that ball ended up as a, a ground grounder with that PCI, but stop complaining, Brev. It's okay. Beating a dead horse here, but early in the count, shift on. Really trying to not ground out into that shift. That pitch was up, so we let it rip, and Belly hits his second home run of the game. Belly re really proven in these two games why uh, he's better than Gehrig. <laughs> I know Belly was an all-star and Gehrig was not, but that would go against my narrative and I wouldn't want that to happen, so hashtag Belly is better confirmed. Hanging slider for Machado, just missed it with our PCI, that is out number two. I'm swinging early in the count there as well, I don't know, I feel pretty good about, uh, about that one. I kind of just, I'm seeing the ball well. I don't know, man. Again, staying away from the inside tunnel with the shift on. Beating the dead horse yet again. I'm really looking for, like, cutters away from me with the shift on. Not that. Didn't listen to myself. Good pitch, man. He gets out of it. We get another solo shot. And uh, if Darvish gets through this inning, unscathed or not, you could definitely make the argument for me to take him out. That's a first pitch out, so we like that. Um, but we got our pitcher spot leading off. Darvish has thrown five strong so far, but again, a guy that's pretty easy to pick up as the game goes on. So we want to be extremely careful and have a very short leash for this card. That's, again, one of my biggest tips that I can recommend is uh, don't let a good you Darvish start go to waste by leaving him in too long. Although this is maybe too good of a start for me to take him out so far. He's really... Uh, Really hasn't made many mistakes, and he's we've been able to make good pitches when we needed to. Although he's making me regret it with that. <laughs> Why is that an error? A slow chop to the pitcher with the pitcher. And now he's going to tie the game, isn't he? Why does this game always happen like this, man? Wow. I got to get untilted, bro. I shouldn't have thrown a cutter there. 100%. That was a that was a classic. I'm tilted, so I'm gonna press X swing or pitch. Wow, that turned around so fast, man. We were looking at a four pitch inning with a routine ground out from the pitcher, and now the game is tied, and he's still rallying. That is maybe one of the most frustrating sequences I have had in a very long time. We get out of the inning, and now I'm gonna pull Darvish because the game's tied. That is so tough, man. Yeah, I just can't afford to not pinch hit here. I need to get the momentum back. I hope you guys learned a lot from pitching with Darvish. Honestly, this was a really strong outing from him. Um, but given the game state, it would be incorrect to leave him in. So we are going to go with Gehrig off the bench here. Five strong, though, from Darvish. Only one earned run. Uh, two earned runs? Not really sure how that works. Let's go with Raleigh. Can do some sinker spam. Some more sinker spam, kind of extend the Darvish start and then kind of move on to different 
sequencing later in the game. Raleigh also has a fork ball, which Darvish doesn't throw a change up, so we may incorporate that as a lot as well. That's a late side, a good single. Doesn't happen very often, but we take those. So far, the pinch hit is paying off. All right, now we want to be pretty aggressive here with Trout. Again, but again, belt high, chest high. That's what we're looking for. No double plays. Double plays would be so, so bad here. All right, tried the front door cutter and missed. Probably a sinker here, but not 100% sure. Even with the low and away slider, we want no part of that. There's the inside sinker. That's what we were looking for the whole time. Mike Trout is such a beast, and the pinch hit pays off big time. So again, reiterating myself once again, but uh, Darvish is the classic case of don't leave your pitcher in too long. That was just a no-brainer pinch hit for me there, and I hope you guys can understand why I kind of felt that way. Even though Darvish has been pitching so well, um, really no hesitation from me in that spot. This is a double, I believe, even if he cuts it off. And now we are rolling a couple of perfect perfects and a good, and uh, we take the momentum right back. This is actually huge for the game state for us to uh, get rewarded for these swings and kind of take the lead right back. And now we can rely on our bullpen moving forward with a bunch of different sequencing, a bunch of different pitch repertoires, a bunch of different looks for him than what he saw from you out of those first couple innings. Uh, he could easily pitch around Griffey here, although he doesn't strike me as the type that's okay with walking people, so I maybe should have been looking to swing 2-1 there. That was probably a mistake. Luckily, he threw me a sinker down the middle or a late side of good rewarded again. I'm not sure why. <laughs> It's kind of sad when I feel bad about swinging late side of good and getting a home run because it really should be like that more often, but it just isn't. But I will consider myself lucky, and all of a sudden we put up four with nobody out. This is the most all-star game ever played, by the way, if you guys were wondering. <laughs> if I had to describe all-star in five innings, it would be this game. Very thankful to have taken the lead back, though, for sure, because... This guy had all the momentum after that Mickey home run. After the error and the Mickey home run tied it up. He had all the big mo. So many sinkers, especially with two strikes from this guy. Getting a little predictable. I know it's hard with Oral. You feel basically obligated to throw sinker cutter, especially on lower difficulties. Uh, but things are very, very obvious in my world right now. See, there was a first pitch slider and I was very early, so good on him. Maybe he try to, tries to incorporate the slower stuff more often early in the count. That would be a good adjustment by him. Cutter down the middle. I think my PCI was terrible. Yes, it was. <laughs> what I'm getting rewarded for versus what I'm not getting rewarded for in this game blows my mind, dude. I will take being up 9-3, to three, though. I'm not going to lie about that. I will take saving the big inning for a direct counter punch to his big inning. I'm never going to complain about that. Bellinger with his third solo shot. We've scored seven in the fifth and still nobody out. Maybe Darvish escapes with the win after all that. He's going to get the dub maybe? What if we just mercy rule this inning and we don't even have to use our bullpen? It's definitely possible. We only need three more. Still nobody out. 2-0 to Machado. He very obviously doesn't have confidence with this pitcher here. Enough to where he can see the meter. He should be mound visiting to make it a little easier for him to see when he's supposed to throw the ball. This is a mistake by him, and I have a feeling he's going to have a hard time finding the strike zone until he does make a pitching change or a mound visit. Four-pitch walk, still nothing from my opponent here. Um, that was a good pitch, so maybe he's figured out the timing, but still re really hard to pitch without being able to see the line. 0-2 to Mookie here. I don't really know what he's going to throw. Nice little low and away cutter that we're able to lay off. Ooh, that was a bad, bad swing by me. Could have easily been a double play. Bat a little too fast there. Another sinker down the middle. This might stay in. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay. 125 power. Got it. Sorry, guys. I know I'm complaining more than... I should be in this game. I do apologize. I will fix that. Lou Gehrig, perfect, perfect to right center. 
He should have mound visited or moved away from Oro Hershiser a long, long time ago this inning. I don't know if he kind of threw in the towel and wants to save his bullpen, but it looks like he's going to quit before the mercy rule. And that is a GG. Darvish technically goes the distance in both starts. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys learned something about you, Darvish, or MLB The Show gameplay in general. Uh, if you made it all the way to the end, uh, be sure to comment down below that Darvish pinch hit was clutch. And uh, if you have any questions about anything we went over in this video, drop those in the comments as well. We'll be happy to answer them as I see them. Thanks all so much for the support this year. Appreciate it a ton. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.